one way to bring down the valuation is to assume a higher whack. And that's like highly sensitive, right? So like, what was the whack that you used for Asana, for example? Like right over 10%. Right over 10%? Yeah. And how did you get to 10%? Uh, like just wait by calc like cost of equity times percentage of equity plus cost of debt times percent of percentage of debt times one less tax rate. Right. I mean, I know the formula for whack, but like, okay. So like, what was the cost of debt for Asana, for example? Do they have I, a I mean, I need to look. Yeah, it's 4.1%. Or at the time, their cost of debt was 4.1%. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then what was their cost of equity? What's the 11%. Rate? Right. But how'd you get to 11%? Risk-free rate was at 3.8%. Market risk premium was at 6%. And beta was at 1.15. Beta was at 1.15. 1.15 seems really low for unprofitable software business, right? Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I just took that straight from... Yeah, but at the same time, I feel like, I don't know. I, I That part, I actually like didn't update. I don't know what it is right now. I'm just saying like, without knowing what the actual beta is, like, I don't even need to look it up. If someone said like, hey, I have a company here and the beta is about 1.15, like what type of company do you think it is? I'm going to guess like consumer staples, like Pepsi or something. You know, I'm not going to guess like a high growth software company that's still hugely unprofitable. Usually tech stocks have a much higher beta, right? Like if the S&P 500 falls by 1%, a lot of times the NASDAQ is falling by 2 or 3%, right? That's why recently uh -huh. when the stock market, like over the last six months, when the stock market has been dropping, the NASDAQ has dropped a lot faster. So uh -huh. I think that's where it's like, if you just, we might have identified the issues. Like if you just increase the beta to something more reasonable, then your cost of equity is going to be higher. Your WAC is going to be higher. And then that will bring your valuation down by a lot. Right. And like, if you do that, so like, if you still have your DCF model, I would go and play around with the WAC assumptions first and see what that brings your valuation down to. And like, even if you're, um, it, I like, just, I just did it and it brought the valuation to like, I changed the beta to two. Okay. And, what did and that it, brought the, it brought the enterprise value to four or five and the, or using multiples. And then it brought the using perpetuity to three, which is like pretty much right at what they're at yeah. right now. Right. And, and, and what, what ended up being your cost of equity if you increase the beta to two is like almost 20%. 16. 16%. So like, if you think about it, before we say your cost of equity is 11%, that also doesn't make sense just intuitively, because if we're saying that, that's basically saying that like for investors to give Asana money, for investors to invest in Asana's equity, they're only expecting an 11% return annually from Asana stock, which like when you're investing in high tech growth stocks, you're expecting a lot more than 11%. The long-term historical average for the S&P 500 is 10%. Yeah, that makes so, sense. So if I'm only gonna get 11%, I'm only outperforming the market by 1%, but I'm taking way more risk because I'm investing in this like unprofitable tech company. Uh -huh. right? So pretty much like now it says, yeah, the terminal value in 2032 is at 15 billion, which like would make sense. And then if you discount that back to today, it's at 4.5 billion, which makes sense. They're at 3.5 right now. Okay. So like that's a lot more defensible, right? Versus where they're trading out today. But like, I think the more important thing here is like, anyone can like tell you what the DCF formula is, right? And anyone can tell you like what the WAC formula is, but it's like actually understanding if the assumptions that you use made sense and being able to kind of like sanity check it or like defend why your numbers are reasonable, right? Like if you sat in an interview and told me the beta is 1.15 for Asana, I'm going to ask you why. And if you tell me like the cost of equity is only 11% for this tech company, I'm going to ask you like, why is it so low? Maybe if it's like a really big tech company, like, um, I don't know, Microsoft, Google type of company, that's a lot safer. Maybe I would accept 11%. Even then, maybe uh -huh. not. But you understand what I'm saying? So it's like understanding the, the actual meaning of each of these inputs and what they're supposed to represent versus just like the technical definition of, oh, like this is how you calculate WAC or this is cost of equity is risk-free rate plus market risk premium times beta, blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah, anyone can do that. But like, can you actually explain why that makes sense? And the bottom line is for the purpose of your interviews, like to be honest, like it's very unlikely that your interview is going to go and look up what Asana's beta is. So I think like, as long as you, I would just plug in assumptions to your model that make your answer more defensible. And that's probably like the best way to go as far as your interviewing goes. Like nobody needs to know what assumptions you actually used when you were actually doing this, right? You can have a totally uh -huh. different set of assumptions for the sake of interviewing. And this is for everyone else that's watching this too. It's like, make sure you guys go and like sanitize your answers, but like for past deals and projects or case comps or anything that you've done, make sure you go and sanitize all the assumptions and numbers that you use and make sure that your answer is actually logical and makes sense.